Life by Divine with Sue DeMay fosters deep healing and profound awakenings as she guides you to hear, answer, and trust the highest calling of your heart. Your host and sacred guide is global impact visionary leader Sue DeMay, a best-selling author, international speaker, and gifted intuitive healer who challenges all of us to shift from life by default or even life by design to truly living life by divine. And now, here is Sue DeMay. Welcome to the show. It's an honor to be here once again with you. And the, the message literally came in, feels like two seconds ago, of what I'm to talk about today. I've been having some health issues. I've talked about that. And I have days where I feel really good. And then I have days where I feel uh, not so happy. But so today's one of those days where I feel heavier. And But I also had a test yesterday where they used some medication and that um, tends to to drag me out a little bit. So I woke up this morning and I wasn't sure if I was going to do a live show or not. I actually was even trying on the idea of just putting a replay and, and resting and taking time. And I really got clear that I'm to show up. I'm to show up live today with you. And so here I am. And it's interesting when we really follow and we trust that life is unfolding for us and that it's that everything that's on our path is purposeful including all this health stuff that's coming up for me and for the most part i'm in a really a place of deep peace around it and just taking the steps and you know following the step that's in front of me it's when i actually reach a little further into the future that the ego catches hold and the ego comes into my mind and starts to create this question of what next and then what after that and what's going to happen now and what's going to happen later. It's like the ego creates this big shiny carrot and lures me out of the present moment and into the future and asking what next or what's going to happen. And the anticipation of trying to figure out the future can only cause a discord. It can only cause pain and suffering in the present moment because the ego's domain is the future and the ego's domain is the past. But the past and the future aren't real. The only thing that's real is this present moment. So when we shift out of needing to know what the future holds or regretting what the past has held for us, we can actually be fully present. And that's where the divine spirit within each of us can guide us and direct us. So as I'm taking this journey, I'm essentially just taking one step at a time. I'm being guided moment to moment. I'm guided to the doctors. I'm guided to the tests. The test I had yesterday, I was for three times my doctor recommended it. Three times I felt a heart no. So I said, no, not ready for that. And then when I went to see him last week, I felt a yes. So I followed it. Now I could go back and question, should I have done it earlier? Shouldn't I? That's not, that's not heart led. That's the ego taking over. That's the ego trying to make sense of something a decision from the past. And it's a trap. It's an ego trap to keep us living in regret or living in fear and worry. And when we're faced with life's challenges, and I know there's a lot of life challenges happening right now for a lot of people in a lot of different ways. And not only personally, but but globally, we're seeing it all over the place. And the only way to find meaning, the only way to live with a sense of purpose, even in the chaos, the only way to find peace is in the present moment. We will not find peace speculating what may or may not happen in the future because we don't know what the future holds. We can't know. 
we have an idea, we have plans, we have preferences. But we can't know for certain what the future holds. That's not how this life is designed. That's not how this life classroom is designed. It's designed for us to be fully present here and now, to experience life as it's unfolding in the present moment. So when we're asking what next, what next, what next, what's the next step, and then the next step, we are not present to life as it's unfolding. We are not living in the present moment. We are not here and now. We are up in our heads, living in the illusion of what may or may not happen in the future. The worries or the fears or the thoughts or the beliefs that distract us from being here now. It's a distraction tactic keeps us in fear, concern, worry. It keeps us in this place of seeking, yearning, needing something, needing something to be different than it is right now. It's a way of resisting the present moment. It's a way of resisting life as it's unfolding. And we're not living for the present moment. We're distracted by what's to come or what has been, the past or the future. And that's all ego. When I talk about listening to the whispers and, and hearing my heart speak to me and following the guidance, it's it all occurs in the present moment. The divine spirit can only guide us in this present moment. And the ego will pull us out of this moment because it's afraid. It only knows fear. It's our teacher of fear. It's a really good teacher. It's a master teacher of fear. It's had a lot of experience. We have our own personal ego and then, and then that's fed by the superego, which is an accumulation or a, a collection of all egos everywhere all together. A powerful force of fear. And that's what's rising right now in the world. But so is love. And love is more powerful than fear. Never underestimate the power of a choice for love. Love is expanding at a rate that has never been before. And fear is being exposed at a rate that has never occurred before. So we're seeing these two opposing forces rising. But the thing is, love's not opposing anything. It's only fear that's in opposition. And on a human level, we need to feel the duality. We need to experience the contrast in order to get, get clear, in order to align fully with our heart's desire. Because that's how we unwind the mind. It's not always needed in every situation, but in many situations, in order to unwind the mind, we need that law of opposites. We need that experience of contrast. Because our minds are programmed for duality, right, wrong, up, down, black and white, good and bad, love and fear. And as we're unwinding our minds, it's essential 
in many situations that we experience the contrast. So the level of love right now that's expanding within each of us and all around the globe is extraordinary compared to any time in history. It's extraordinary. And because that light and love is expanding with such enormity, the contrast of the darkness and the density and the fear is more evident. It's always been there. It's just been hidden. It's just been buried. The good news is that it's all coming into the light of awareness. It's all coming out into the open so that we can see it and witness it and make a conscious choice over and over again for love. Even in the presence of fear, even in the presence of our own fear, we can choose love. It takes more courage, but we can certainly do it. So as we look upon the world right now, the question may be coming into your awareness or maybe dancing around in the background. What's next for humanity? What, what's next? What will happen? What, what does our future hold? The truth is we don't know. We actually, we can't know. As humans, we can't know. Because as soon as our mind embraces something as the future, the ego has a stronghold. You've just given all your power to the ego to manipulate, to navigate, to influence, to convince, to distract to tempt you. So the only thing we can know for certain is what, what now? What's happening now? What's happening now and what would you have me do now? What now? That's, that's where we're at. That's where we can align with the divine. That's where we can align with spirit. That's where we can get clear guidance. If you're focused on the step that's in front of you, you're fully present. You're here and now fully present to life as it's unfolding right before your eyes. And in that space, we can be in alignment, full alignment with life by divine. Full alignment with spirit as our guide. Because the truth is we don't know what the future holds. We can only know what this moment holds. And in this moment, it's full of potential. Potential for guidance, potential for a choice for love, potential for a redirect, a course correction. Potential for all of humanity to wake up. Potential for all fear to be transmuted into love, all darkness into light, all density into the vibrant energy of love. That potential doesn't reside in the future. It resides in this moment right here, right now. So the more you can be here now, we can stop chasing the future, the uncertainty of the future, which only feeds our fear and worry. One of my favorite mantras that came in once when I was meditating is, I do not know what the future holds. I only know what this moment holds. And in this moment, I am here with you speaking. 
I do not know what the future holds. I only know what this moment holds. And in this moment, fill in the blank, whatever it is. I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling afraid. I'm feeling happy. I'm feeling peaceful. I'm feeling neutral. I'm feeling lost. Whatever it is, it's okay. Because as long as we're resisting what is, it will continue. We will suffer. When you resist life, life resists you. When you resist what's happening in this present moment, you're saying no to life as it's unfolding. And we often do that when we don't like what we see in front of us. But I know in my heart that if it's on our path, it's purposeful. It's for our deepest healing. Even when it's hard, even when it's painful, even when it doesn't make sense. We've come here to have a human experience. And that human experience includes the ups and downs. It includes the highs and lows. It includes the experience of fear. It includes the experience of love. We're programmed to fear it all. We're programmed to fear love itself. We're programmed to fear fear. So in each moment, we need to make a choice. And the only way we can make a choice is if we're present fully to this moment. Because we can't make a choice in the future. Life isn't occurring in the future. Life is occurring now. We can't make a choice in the past. The past is done. It's a moment that's already passed. It's gone. Life is occurring now. Right here, right now. So we need to remember how to be here now. Because we were born that way. We were born remembering. If you look at a newborn, you look at a baby, even a young child, they're very deeply present. More present than adults, more present than anyone else. As soon as we start growing up, as soon as we start embracing all the programming around us, a lot of that occurs in the first six years. We just accept everything because we don't have the capacity to deny something. No, that's not true for me. We just accept everything. It's like a bunch of software being downloaded. And that begins to create this foundation of our thoughts and beliefs that dictate our experiences of life. And all of that can even be healed and changed. We can change our minds. We can change our beliefs. And our experience of life will shift in an instant when we do. I've seen it over and over again with my own life. And I've seen it over and over again with thousands, thousands of people. But we're programmed to chase, to seek to yearn, to need, to want something other than what is. We're programmed to believe that nothing is good enough. And most of us are programmed to believe that we're not good enough. So we keep striving and trying and doing and seeking Our soul is content. Our soul is at peace. It's our humanness that's unsettled. It's our humanness that has that drive for something more or to know or understand 
or to have certainty or a guarantee of what the future holds. But we don't know what the future holds. I don't know where all this health stuff will lead me. I'm just taking the step that's in front of me. I do not know what the future holds. I only know what this moment holds. And in this moment, fill in the blank. You may want to write that one down. It's one of the most powerful tools to bring you present. The other piece is just letting go of the need to know. I don't know and it's okay. Acceptance. I don't know and it's okay. The next step is I don't know, but I'm curious. Curiosity opens the mind. Curiosity dissolves judgment. And it opens us up to follow guidance. I don't know, but I'm curious. I wonder. Wonderment and curiosity are beautiful energies to work with. I wonder what I'll be guided to do now. I wonder what my heart will guide me to do now. You notice I said now, not next. There's a one of the teachings in Heart Led Living, we talk, I talk with my members and my students, I teach them what's happening now as a way to check in. But I also guide them into the question of what would you have me do now? Not what should I do, but what would you have me and who they're, who they're asking is the divine spirit within them. What would you have me do now? And I can't tell you how many clients or how many members they'll tell me they, they often will shift the language just without even realize they're shifting the language. They go, what should I do now? They often go to should as opposed to what would you have me do? And then the other thing that they change is what would you have me do next? It's so deeply ingrained in our programming to figure out what next as opposed to what now? What now? So as I was opening up to doing this radio show, I'm like, I didn't know what was next. I didn't know what was going to come out of my mouth. I still don't know what are, where I'm going to go, what I'm going to say. I'm simply allowing the words to flow through me. The words that you need to hear and perhaps I need to share What now? When we live in this space of what now, there's a real deep trust that's required. And there is a real profound blind faith. Because we're taught in the world to prepare for the future, to live for the future, to plan ahead, to make a list. To have your one-year plan, your three-year, five-year, five-year plan, your 10-year plan. I'm like, I don't know what my future holds. And if you've been following my life just even in, in the last couple of years with this radio show, you'll, you'll recognize that I get a lot of spiritual redirections. And I embrace them. And yes, sometimes I question them. That's my human mind goes there but I don't judge myself for going there. I allow myself to go there so that I could actually unwind the mind and look at my attachments. I've released so many attachments over the years by allowing myself to go into that questioning mind and observe it and witness those questions and try on the different scenarios until I come to this place of letting go And that's where we really free our mind to lead with our heart. We really free ourselves to experience a life that the mind couldn't begin to create. So 
So asking what now, you're literally tuning into your heart and saying what now? What now? And you'll be given directions, moment to moment directions, like a recipe. See, spirit gives you the directions of the recipe one step at a time. Ego would give you five or 10 steps ahead. You're going to do this, then you're going to do that. Then you're going to go over here and then you're going to talk to that person. Then, like, that's not how it works. That's not life is unfolding. That's an anticipation of what may or may not happen. The moment to moment guidance occurs moment to moment. You will get the guidance in the moment that you need it. And, and spirit works on a need to know basis. Spirit will only give you what you need to know in that moment. Nothing more, nothing less. The ego likes to create a lot of fillers. It fills in gaps, it fills in stories, it creates different scenarios, it grasps at an understanding, it tries to make sense of things. It makes up stuff. And that's all in an attempt to keep us safe and protected, playing small, buying into fear, because that's the only way to keep us safe, according to the ego. The ego only knows fear. It's an overprotective helicopter parent that will stop at nothing keep us safe. And because it only knows fear, it uses fear to prevent us from taking risks, to prevent us from stretching, from growing, from expanding, prevent us from speaking our truth. It'll prevent us from standing up when we're meant to stand up. It will also prevent us from staying quiet when we're meant to stay quiet. Because in the, in the eyes of the ego, basically the, the scenario is we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't. The ego will play both ends against the middle. If you speak up, you're at risk. If you stay quiet, you're at risk. That's the ego. And you see that playing out right now. You see the duality, you see the contrast, you see the sides, the perceived separation that's occurring right now and, and the fight to be right and the fight to prove the other wrong, which is the same thing, but just a different energy directed outward. We're seeing it over and over again right now. And it's out in the open, it's blatant, it's obvious, it's, it's in your face. It's all over social media, in person. The real contrast of density is showing up right now. And a real darkness that's actually in all of us. We all have a shadow side. We can heal it if we're willing to look at it. If we're willing to use our life classroom and our experiences to help us shine light on it, then we can heal our own shadows. We can heal our own darkness. We can heal those deeply rooted fears. We can heal the resentment, the anger, the wounded little child. And there's one within each of us. And it often looks messy and it's often not easy.
Everything I'm going through is not easy. But I trust it's purposeful. Therefore, I, I find peace in most moments of it. Adi Ashanti is one of the spiritual teachers I like to learn from. And his book, uh, The End of Your World, is one that I turn to quite often, along with A Course in Miracles, of course. And he talks about how the path to enlightenment or the path to awakening, however you want to word it, is a destructive path. You're literally breaking down everything, all the foundation we've been standing on, because the foundation we've been standing on is all based on fear. And right now, as a whole, all of humanity, that foundation we've been standing on is crumbling beneath our feet. The world is literally, the ground is shaking beneath our feet. But it's our prayers and our intention to awaken, to align with love, that's actually causing all the shaking. It's causing all of the density to rise up. And yes, it's intense because it's dense, heavy, it's dark. But the only way to heal it all is to let it rise, to let it flush through, to let it come to the surface and have its expression. It's all energy moving and shifting, contracting, expanding. So when we look at healing, our experiences of healing is the experience of energy. So for example, any health issues in the body, so all of the stuff that is rising to the surface for me in the physical body, I know that it's a clearing for one, but there's also health patterns and symptoms that are in place because there's patterns that I, how I've lived my life that actually have fed these physical symptoms, these physical ailments, these illnesses or diseases. The one I recently uncovered was recognizing that for me, receiving came with conditions. I can give and give and give and give without condition, but receiving, me receiving came with conditions. Meaning if money came to me, then, then I could help somebody else. I couldn't just receive without extending. I couldn't just receive and let it in fully without some idea or some belief or some thought of how that was going to be then extended. So sneaky, I didn't see it until just recently. But that's, for me, that, that, that was like a drain. Because as long as I'm receiving with the condition that I can give it away or extend it or somehow help another person, then my receiving is conditional. So this last week has been about how can I receive without the need to extend. I may be guided to extend, but without the need to. That's the ego. Receiving without condition. When I look at the physical body, when we look at the physical body in the way of density, energy, energy has density. Energy is vibration, energy is density. So the experience of denser emotions, they feel like kind of a lower vibrational experience, a lower vibrational frequency. It's experienced as dense. So anger, resentment, fear, helplessness are denser emotions. They're heavier, they're more contracted, they're more closer together. The, the energy doesn't move so well, it's kind of compacted. 
So it's experienced in the physical body as a density, a heaviness, or something along those lines. When we look at the physical body, that's our, that's our experience in our humanness. That's our experience that's closest to matter. So our physical body is quite dense. But it's just energy. And then we shift to more the subtle body or the energy body, and that's where we can experience the energy within us and around us. This is the state between energy and matter body being the matter, the physical matter, and the energy. So the energy body is not as dense as the physical body. Then there's the emotional body. The emotions are less dense. And I talked about the emotional scale, more positive experiences or emotions are, are less dense, more expanded. The negative emotions are more dense, they're contracted. But the emotional body or the emotions are energy and motion. And the emotions are less dense than the physical body. So as we're flashing through and clearing any emotional density or any emotional leftovers, sometimes that can be experienced in the physical body as a dense energy or contraction or tightness. But it's just energy moving. So we can allow our emotions to flush and move, like sadness and grief. We can allow tears that allows us crying, allows us to release some emotional density of grief and sadness. Anger, frustration, resentment, those can be expressed in healthy ways as well. Sometimes through words. Sometimes through punching pillows or kicking, kicking your mattress. Whatever it is that needs to occur when we allow the emotional density to move, when we allow our emotions to flow, we actually allow the experience of the energy to move through the physical body and release it. And there's the mental body. So our thoughts and our beliefs actually are less dense than our emotions, less dense than the physical body. Our thoughts very much influence the physical body, influence our emotional body, influence physical matter. So a positive thought or positive belief will have a positive impact on the physical body. So we have a thought, positive emotion, positive response in the body. If it's a negative thought, we'll have a negative emotion that follows and a negative experience in the body. So when we're healing the physical body, when we're very fully present here and now to what's happening in the physical body, we can actually use the body to trace back any emotional density that needs to heal, and any thoughts or beliefs that need to be released or healed, changed or shifted. So we can actually go through the body to heal the mind. We can go through the body to release those uncried tears or unresolved frustration or resentment or anger. So physical sensations in the body are a great way or a great point of entry to open a key to the door for healing. But when we open up and choose to heal, when we choose to awaken, it gets messy. It can feel intense at times. We can feel like there's just these flushing through of emotions, the emotional body is clearing. All of a sudden we just have this uncontrollable surge of emotion. We can have a flushing through the physical body, the physical body moving energy, and that often shows up as different symptoms. And if we get in our heads and we try and figure it out, we'll just get more confused. So the key to healing our body, our minds, is to be fully present to here and now. 
because it's here and now where we get the guidance. We'll be guided to a practitioner. We'll be guided to a book. We'll be guided to a website. Whatever it is, we'll be guided to if we're open, if we're present. The key is to be here now. And when you can accept all that life is offering you in this moment, even if you don't like it, even if it feels hard, then you're opening up to acceptance and surrender, but also then creating space for guidance, creating space for the divine direction. But if we're so caught up in, no, I don't like this, and this is wrong, and what's happening here, and why is this going on, we ask why more than what, then the ego has a stronghold. The ego hijacks everything. When we align with our spiritual body, our divine body, that's, that's where there's, there's only expansiveness. There's no experience of density because it's just this beautiful, pure consciousness, pure energy, spaciousness, oneness. And our heart is the bridge to that experience. Our heart is the bridge to our spirituality, our experience of our spiritual body, our divine connection to our source. But in order to really fully live oneness and embrace our humanness, we need to heal all the density in between. We need to heal all the density that's blocking us from being in full alignment, from being fully awake. All the blocks to love, all the blocks to our divine nature, all the density that's preventing us from fully embodying our divinity. So when we ask what now, we get guided. We, we have our internal GPS turns on and it gives us the directions. It leads us in our humanness to unwind our mind, to clear all the density and to align fully with our divinity. It's in the here and now that all of that can occur. The future is full of uncertainty. The past is full of information and memories and that can come with regret. But it's the present moment that actually holds everything and anything and even more than you can ever imagine. The answers you seek are in the present moment. The peace you seek is here and now. The level of consciousness that you yearn for is held in this present moment. All potential is here. And now, be here now. It's the only place to be. It's the only place we can fully be. And we can embrace our physical body. We can embrace our emotions. We can embrace our thoughts and beliefs. And we can change all of those things. But we can only do that in this present moment. We can only be guided from here. Right here, right now. So 
So take a deep breath. Just be here now with me. Hear my voice. Feel the energy. Be fully present to all that this moment holds for you. And if you're here with me now and you suddenly feel some anxiety rising, don't dismiss it. Don't see it as an intrusion. See it as an opportunity. A friend rising to the surface to show you what's left over, to show you what needs to heal, to direct you. Point you in the direction. So if you're triggered by what's going on in the world, then there's something within you that you need to heal, that you need to look at. But it also means that you're having a human experience and that's okay. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to feel fear. It's okay to feel all these things. But don't camp out in them. Don't dwell in them. Don't let the ego pull you down into those wormholes and keep you there. Use all the experiences that you're witnessing, all the experiences that are happening all around the globe. Use them to heal as deeply as possible, to awaken as fully as possible. Because that's what the world needs right now for all of us to get out of our heads and into our hearts and let our heart lead, let the divine guide us. Because it's only from that place of divine guidance that we can truly be guided on behalf of all of humanity all together all at once. The guidance that comes through us is for everyone, including you, few weeks ago, I did an episode on all of our dreams and visions need to evolve or dissolve. Many of mine have dissolved. And many of mine are evolving. And I'm simply taking it moment by moment, step by step. And doing my best to remain fully present, to be with the emotions as they rise up, to be with the symptoms, to be with everything. Surrender and accept it all. Forgive my judgments. Forgive my worries. Forgive my fears. Forgive them all over to the divine spirit and ask, what now? What would you have me do? How can I heal these pieces? What do I need to see? What do I need to feel? What do I need to know? What would you have me do now? I soften. I surrender. I forgive, I let go, I let God. That's my process over and over and over again. Whether it's three in the afternoon or three in the morning. Be here now. Everything you seek is here and now. When you begin to live fully present to this moment, you can learn to embrace life fully, wholly, and completely. You can embrace it all. Embrace the density, embrace the expansiveness, embrace the fear, embrace the love, and recognize that the contrast right now on our human level is purposeful. We can witness the darkness and the density, but we don't need to dive into it, especially when it's not ours. We can witness the fear and we can make a choice for love. But we can witness it without judgment. Because the moment you add judgment, you've added ego. You added fear.
be here now. Ask your heart, what now? What would you have me do now? And sometimes the guidance will come in and sometimes there's just quiet. And in that quiet, that's the guidance. That silence speaks volumes. But the ego would have you come in and go, see, you can't hear. You don't hear anything. Nothing's happening. You're not getting anything. Trust that, that silence. Trust that quiet. Because sometimes inspired action is no action. Sometimes there's nothing you're meant to do. Although you may want to do something, sometimes what you're guided to do is nothing. And there's miracles in that. There's miracles in that. I call them those pregnant pauses. Trusting the divine timing. So having shared all of that today, the guidance I received and clarity I received just in the last couple of days is that I need to take a break from doing my live show. So I won't be joining you live every Tuesday, but you will receive the replays if you show up live at 9 a.m. and you need some inspiration. There'll be replays that'll come on. Some of the past archive shows. And of course, you can always go to the archive on my website and access, you know, there's 88 episodes now. You can go back and download all of them and use them as guided, as directed. When you're looking for some support or a message, the episodes are all there for you. If you feel to reach out to me directly, you can do that through my website, Heart Led Living, heartledliving.com. So the radio show podcast archives are there. I've got my inner circle membership, healing membership experience. One-on-one if you need some private experience, private intuitive healing experience with me. I have a whole page of free resources. The 30-day challenge is there. You can receive my audio book for free. The 21-day healing meditation challenge is there. You can get 21 days of healing meditations for free. There's other resources that are available on my website. So just know that as you sink into the present moment, as you drop into your heart space and ask for guidance, sometimes you'll get directed and you won't always understand why the direction comes in. Sometimes we get present moment hindsight. We can see in the present moment and make and find meaning. Other times we don't get hindsight until later. But I know and I trust when the guidance comes in that when I follow, it's serving all, including me. So for now, I trust and know that this is what's meant to be. I'm meant to pause my live show for now course the live show will continue with some replays so i'm going to encourage you to continue to listen and at the same time tune in listen listen to your heart listen to the divine spirit within you it's always there whispering directing guiding meeting you in every moment be here now It's the only place to be. I love you. I see you. I honor you. I appreciate you. Until we meet again, love and blessings. You've been listening to Life by Divine with your host, Sue DeMay. Shift your consciousness from head to heart and enliven your soul as you discover how to lead with your heart and live your own life by divine. Join Sue in the growing global heart-led living community at heartledliving.com. That is heartledliving.com.